Hello and welcome to our presentation on Fogout Application Performance Monitoring, the big four differentiators. Let's go ahead and get started with our first differentiator, which is User Experience Monitoring. We believe Foglight has the most comprehensive set of end-user capabilities on the market. To cut right to the core of those capabilities, I'm going to do a session search in one of the Foglight screens. Now, one of the things to observe here is that we retrieve all of these user sessions for a particular application that we're, that's being monitored. The three big things we'd like to highlight in these sessions are performance, volume, and errors. Now, the points that I would like to make on user sessions is first, at the core of the Foglight capabilities, is the fact that we collect every hit every time for every user. So if I open up one of these users in a session explorer, you'll see every single hit that they got back to their browser coming from our web servers that we're monitoring. Not only that, but we have all of the detailed performance information along with any error information that may come back from one of those hits. Further, what you can do is you can click on a specific page and if you scroll down and look at the information on the page, you'll have all of the performance details. So for each page, I can click and that detail level will change for me. Now, what I could point out here is that in the page details, there's information gathered from a network analyzer. So from a network analyzer perspective, it says this page took 1.4 seconds, roughly. The client time was 917 milliseconds. And you can also see the network delay. So this is measured on the network analyzer. Now if we go down more, you can see this is measured inside the browser. So one of the really big capabilities here is that we attach these records together. So now you can see DNS times and things that happened before the actual bytes went out of the browser. Now, the last thing that I would like to make, the last point that I'd like to make is that we can actually take, because we have such detailed data on every single user, we can take that data and we can mash it together and create a replay. So we can actually reproduce the user session and do, show you everything as the user saw it, including where they clicked during their session. So this is really a core capability of Foglight, and it all resides around the fact that we collect everything. We don't throw anything away, and we link this all to our analytics that you'll see later. The next big differentiator is transaction DNA. This is a patent pending technology, and what I'm going to do to help you better understand how this is better for troubleshooting, collaboration, and even root cause analysis, we're going to break it down into three areas for you. The first is infrastructure. So transaction infrastructure DNA takes all your pages, your API calls, database calls, relate them together in a single record. We filter it by a topology, and then we can analyze that topology to look at all the different places where those scattered transactions flow through, and it'll paint a really clear picture. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in the product. If we click on one of our filters, and this is for a specific site, we can see that our response time breakdowns, this shows all of those pages and Java hits all, all going through a topology. We can do it as we can explore the breakdowns, and this will even give us a more detailed breakdown of how these transactions flow. So this is an individual transaction. This is a get for a detailed wood finish. And you can see here the blue lines show you the, the parts of the topology that it hits. So we represent things like the end user, the physical nodes, the virtual nodes. Even on the back, you'll see some things that show the databases that get hit. So the blue line shows the pieces of the topology that were traveled for this one request. Now, the next one we're going to go into is we're going to take a more detailed look. And instead of the infrastructure, we're going to look at the traces. And this is really cool how we take individual traces out of the browser, the network, the application, collecting all of them, but we relate every single one of those together. And then we filter it by a website like we just did. Now, this lets us analyze things like what location did they come from, what's the endpoint, the content category, you know, all of this valuable information that helps us in troubleshooting. So we're going to take a look at that by jumping to the pages. We'll go to Advanced Find, and let's just look at the pages that had an end-to-end -end problem. Now, each of these pages, the information that comes back on it, the URL, the client IP, I can drill down on the user session, and in this session explorer, we'll be able to tell all this information. This is the location it came from, the operating system. If they logged in, it'll give you a username. This is the page. These are all the elements on the page. The individual elements will tell you the end, all the timings for each of these individual elements. And we'll even go further. We even take the information from the client-side instrumentation and we bring that together so that you can see that information at the page level. So this one picked up a JavaScript error inside the browser and related it to the page that the JavaScript error happened on. 
So here's a JavaScript error, no big deal. But now I can even go to the replay, and I could say this is the page that that JavaScript error happened on, which is something nobody else can do. Now let's take a look at our last one. Now our last one, which is really important, is let's go up to the business sub a little bit, and we take a sequence. We take these business events, we relate them together, we filter it on progress, and we look at things like the drop-offs and the variances and other business metrics. So looking at that in the product, we're going to start with our operations console again. And now instead of segmenting on a website or a filter, we're segmenting on a sequence. So this had a 5.3 conversion. We'll look at that sequence. You can see all the different steps that each of the users went through. 208 started and 28 finished in the last 60 minutes. So here a bunch of stopped on shipping. I can click on the shipping step and I can say, go ahead and show me some of the exits for shipping. So show me the three that exited on shipping. This will give you an example of the ones that exited on shipping and you could even go into a replay. You're in the same place before. Now you can tell if an IT problem actually happened that caused that drop off in shipping. So let's you analyze each step and where the user stopped for their last step. On the big data and analytics front, Foglight's data architecture is specially designed to support collection of both the ultra-high granularity transaction trace data combined with the lower frequency resource and, and other metric data. So for this one, we're going to jump right into the product because this is what really shows nicely. I can just dig into the data. So back to our service operations console, we have a group of transactions like we looked at earlier. Hits. Uh, coming from web pages, Ajax calls, Java traces, all of those grouped together. And then we break this out immediately by the browsers, by content types, and by locations, so that we say out of the 3.2 thousand requests, we have seven different content types. I can click on those content types, and it'll tell me the relative scale of those request sizes. So here, for JavaScript, during this time period, out of the 3.2 thousand, 1.9 thousand were Java requests. And I can see the relative status just of that content type. So it really helps you nail uh, problems or nail down problems to a specific content type or a specific location or even a specific browser. Now, if we go another level, we actually dig down and we get to the traces. And this is, again, one of our big differentiators. I, I can't stress this is enough. It's having all of that data saved. So by you, having all that data saved, we can always go down another level and do another level of analytics. So I can take all this data and I can come back and I can say, let's pivot. And pivot will actually take all the properties out of the data, all the key properties, and it'll tell you how many of those traces that you've looked up are related to different areas. So here we can see according to the operating system, according to the location. So this is really interesting data when you're troubleshooting. What you're looking for is one big spike, like most of these problems are in JavaScript or most of these problems are in the Firefox browser and then you could really hone in on something that you can fix. Now if I go back to our search hits, there's another analytic capability in here and that's a map. So I can drill down on this map and it'll show us the hit count that we have across all the regions or what I can do is I can say just give me the client errors or the server errors or the warnings and it'll project those on the maps uh, according to what we have. So that's kind of a summary of the, um, the analytic capabilities. Now let's take a look at one more analytic capabilities, and that's basically on, on the business transaction like we looked at earlier. So if I click on this business transaction, what we can see is that we are able to immediately see how many users made it through. I can drill in on 20 people that stopped on shipping, and I can really look at those 20 people, and I can do the same type of analytics there. So I can say, where are all the people stopping? Well, they're all stopping at a specific browser or the, all the people that come from a location and I could take that same data and put that same data on a map. So this is a business reason as opposed to an IT reason. The final key differentiator that I want to highlight is extensibility. While Foglet is used extensively by application support teams at many of the largest web properties in the world, we have thousands of customers who also use Foglet to monitor their databases, their hypervisors, and other systems. We have one large financial services customer, for example, who uses Foglight to monitor more than 20,000 databases across all platforms for a team of 350 to 400 DBAs globally. Now let's take a look at this in the product just to get an understanding. So the service operations console is the primary interface, but when you start enabling interfaces for other teams, you can see the database dashboard. This is a more of a focus on all the different databases. So I can go to SQL Server databases, Oracle databases, 
look at the relative status. There's a whole workflow here for DBAs. Um, alternatively, I can jump up and go to my application server monitor, and this is more for a Java domain administrator. Um, and, and this is the same one, except we'd have a focus on the Java servers, uh, the different applications, the different requests within those applications. So you have more of a view for a specialist as opposed to a generalist that's looking at all the transactions from end to end. Thank you very much for attending our presentation.